Hello and everyone, this is the <laughs> Saturday human call. I can't tell if we're, yes we are. Okay, hi, this is the Saturday Hukalo Human Colony webinar. Today our guest channel is Max Rempel. Hi Max, how are you doing? Hey, I'm all right. Good. All right, good. All right, why don't you tell us, um, we've got some things going on with Human Colony. Uh, coming up in August, we have our third uh, workshop. What is that gonna be? Same as the previous two and different, of course. Um, I know the first ones, the first two ones were um, sort of a challenge to make because we were creating them from scratch. But for the third one, we already have a pattern and already have people who come every workshop. So it's all kind of set up and we know what to do. And it is a familiar place as well. So for those who haven't been there, it is a camp with wooden wood cabins and uh, a chef is pretty good there he cooks like traditional uh, american italian but he does vegetarian dishes for us as well i asked for rice and lentils and a few other things and um, he is the north element the, the 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 owner and the cook so we have okay, like a lot of oh august 16. so there is a lot of earth elements there there is a, a little lake and the highlight of the workshop is where we stand around the lake, everyone holding a candle at night. And from the um, little pier, uh, Jim is channeling whoever is coming. Usually this would be Angelics. And we do activation of vortices and uh, the, our, our usual stuff, the channeling, healing, galactic Reiki, Takur teaches galactic Reiki. And uh, now we'll be more relaxed, so we'll have lots of free time, so we can hug Jim all the time when he's not teaching, or during the time he's teaching. That's about that's about how it goes. And there is plenty of space okay. there, so and uh, some cockroaches, no, not cockroaches, some some insects, some insects, but no, no, not not many mosquitoes, so it's pretty good. It's in 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 a wooden area, wood 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 area. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So that's what is the date again? August what? August sixteenth for for five nights, and you can arrive one day before, one day later, and leave one day later. So you can even spend a whole week there. Okay. And what is the cost? Uh four hundred. Yeah, it's four hundred. It's like my, way cheaper than you would uh, pay anywhere else, because the camp is okay, sort of um, so sort of uh, it's a Christian camp. Very nice. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. So, okay. So, um, so today you're going to channel for us on uh, mischievousness. Is that yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. yep. That's mm -hmm. a nice topic. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to start with Paramahansa Yogananda, you said. Yeah. There is a kid who wants to play. Hold on a second. All right. No problem. Is my, is my video gone out? My video went out, didn't it? Okay. Let me put this on there. Yeah, she heard about mischievousness and started immediately started to play along with that. That's, uh -huh. <laughs> that's good. All right. So for everyone in the room, um, you can put your questions in the chat. I'll be following you, following them on the YouTube. You can also put your questions there. We'll be taking questions today from the YouTube chat. So hi to everyone in YouTube. And uh, yeah, do you want to do a blessing? Do you want? Does anyone want to do a blessing before we start? Anyone in our room? I guess Karen, you have to do a blessing. I have to do the blessing. All right. Um, my camera seems to have gone out, so I. No, will... you're good. We can see you fine. You can see me. Yeah, you're just fine. I can see you. Moving. I think that's just a picture. Oh, there I am. Okay, great. All right. Well, let's do a, a blessing then. Um, I'll do one in a light language, if that's okay, for everyone. So, si alakara shampi lachia dora madila si shalokorama de faraya manasita kiashala si kanti paroya tilaria kasapa shasya is na mariara koram balariara di kasha tupa is sandiala malia kasa. So. The beauty will save the world, and um, the beauty is made of elements. Be the colors the beauty is. Play the colors, create the beauty. And express the, the praise for the divine beauty through yourself. 
Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. All right, we will, um, Joanna, how about at the end, Joanna's saying she can do some light language. How about at the end you do the outro blessing? I think that would be a good idea. All right, Max, whenever you're ready. All right, um, I will see you around. I don't go too far. Okay, you'll be walking on the beach. We'll come get you when it's time. <laughs> How is the sound? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. We, can hear, we can hear you just fine. Hello. Good day, my friends. Today I wanted to speak about mischievousness. I want to invite you to remember, to recall Why you came here? Why did you come to this life? What have attracted you here? What has attracted you here? Did you come here to suffer? Remember yourself before entering the body. What was your expectation? What was your mission? What idea drove you here? Why are you here? I invite you to remember that you came here, first of all, to play. First of all, to enjoy yourself. First of all, because you missed the play, the playground, the excitement of the challenge, of uncertainty. Like a child game when you close your eyes and try to walk around with closed eyes. That's what you do now. You see, do you think the creator is boring? Do you think the creator is far above remote? Do you think the creator is in charge? How do you feel about the creator? Is it something in charge, a father figure, serious? Grim, sad, upset, angry. No. Oh, maybe some of the creators are like that, but not ours. Ours is fun. Ours is a trickster. And to be more precise, ours is a tricksters, a trickstress. Embrace the feminine of your nature, feminine nature of yours. And remember, recall the feminine nature of yours, the feminine nature of yours is 
the mistress of illusion is a trickstress, is mischievous. <laughs> play with that, play with that thought. Realize now, remember now, to be able to accomplish your mission here, you got to have something in you which is of your nature, which is of the Creator's nature which is of the Divine Mother nature, to be a trickster, to be mischievous, to be able to explode the system. You came here as a light worker to challenge the system and to explode it from inside, to explode it from inside to implode it from outside in, to transform it, and when it explodes, to help it ascend. I don't invite you to play tricks on people unless they benefit from that. Play the tricks on the system. Yeah. Explode the system. Transform it. You are the transformative element of the creation. And realize the Creator is not doing it alone. And it's not above. There is nobody above you. I mean, that is one of the major messages of today, one of the major realization of today. There is no one above you. You are equal. There is no above no one above and no one below you are equal to everyone that is a playground nature that is the nature of this playground the creator is just one of the players here allowing you to play even your spirit guides even your angels they cannot make decisions for you. They cannot make your free choices. Your choice is free, and it's yours. You are equal. There is no one above. There is no one above. And that's the nature of the whole universe. This universe is where everyone plays on equal terms. The spirits, the physical, the aliens all play on equal terms. So don't speak to anyone subserviently and don't treat anyone as lower that is my message of today <laughs> don't you see it's all a giant joke and the only way to walk your path here is by being a joker and playing alone with other jokers. Your willpower, the strength of your heart, the strength of your gods, makes you move forward and makes you accomplish your mission. Embrace it. Embrace the mischievousness. Embrace the tricksterness. Be a trickstress. Wake up. I invite comments and questions. Does anyone in the room have a question? Ava, go ahead if you have a question. Yes, I do have a question. And thank you. That's actually a really lovely message about being playful. And that's, that's great. Um, I do actually have a mess, uh, question about the kind of general um, functioning of being who come here and how it all works because honestly I don't know um, like uh, I mean I'm going to use me as an example because I know me but it's actually a general question so um, I'm supposedly Fendorian right but I've been here for many many lifetimes but somehow I'm still Fendorian so 
and I seem to be having karma on this in this lifetime. So yes, I came here and I had great fun, but last uh, some incarnations were not so so much fun. But again, how it all works? How how is it possible that we, after so many lifetimes, like I am still not human, technically speaking? How I mean, I just really don't know. So uh, I don't know if you could elaborate a little bit about those players who come here from <laughs> elsewhere and then we kind of get entangled. I, I don't even know how to exactly um, verbalize yes. this question. Got it, got it, got it. Yes, got it. So the question, as I got it, is... You sort of want to be a human, and on the other hand, you find yourself an outsider. And you want to be home, you want to be at home here, and yet you feel that you never will be here at home. And whose fault is that, or how to deal with this? And how many of you don't feel home on Earth? almost everyone and if you don't see earth how many of you will be homesick almost everyone so this is in a way this challenge this dichotomy this duality home not home human, alien, human, spirit, part of the whole, not part of the whole, united, separated. This duality is by design here, of course, especially on Earth, especially on Earth. It creates an interesting opportunity for the growth for you and for others. Because if you were a human, it, will, it wouldn't be you, it wouldn't be you, you would be possibly holding tight on the past. You would possibly wish to slow down the ascension. You would possibly want to return the things to the golden age of the past of the humanity, with all its hierarchy and traditional values. Realize, realize that it's not the humanity, not the modern homo sapiens that will ascend. It's not you genetic humans. It will, it's gonna be a new species, the sixth, the sixth race. You are giving birth to the sixth race, and it will be different. The ones who will populate the ascended humanity, the Teraha, going to be a new race. They are already walking among you, and some of you are of this new race. So you are, by definition, not humans. You are the sixth race, or I would say the early genetic design of the sixth race. Your light worker star seeds are intermediate genetic designs of the sixth race. The, the Homo Galacticus. Ah. Hold on a second, there is more coming. Hmm. So how to deal with this? Take it easy, play, realize it's not up to you, not, not for you to keep it all the way. You came here to break the system. You came here to transform the system. You brought the sparkle. You brought the... Can you turn off that noise? Max is speaking. You brought here... Um, You brought here a new stream of information, a new stream of the soul, 
a new stream of genetics. It's sort of alien and sort of not because there is a component missing to the human soul and to the human genetics, which is needed for the completion. So you brought the missing component of the completion and it is universal. It's not alien, not human, it is universal. Here we go. I'm back. You're back. Thank you so much. Thank you for asking. That was a, hmm, a good question. Can I can I ask you a question as well oh. about that? Because mm, <clears throat> is it your turn? <laughs> it is my turn. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> I have a question about what is exactly about what you were saying. I have the information just in the last day or so that one of the things about remembering who we are is that we can. It's not that there's a mistake that we're here by having a memory or having a knowing of who we are in the truest sense of who we are. But like you said, just so that it gives us a new perspective with which we can bring new ideas into the world, but that we are still really supposed to be here. There's no mistake about it. So even though we may be Fandorian or some other being, we are also still human. And we're not, or else we wouldn't be able to be in this body and, and we wouldn't be able to be on this earth. But the fact that we have the memory of where we were brings us another perspective to live in this world. Is that what you were just saying or no? Absolutely, yes. Um, here is one perspective. You are a child. You are a star seed. You are a hybrid of a human and an alien, of a human soul and an alien soul, of human soul tree and an alien soul tree, you are unique in a way as a starseed on a soul level and genetic level. And that is by design, that is as you wished, that was your choice. You created yourself. You created yourself. When you came here when you were preparing to drop down on this physicality to get <laughs> to get asleep when you're preparing to get asleep to go into this illusion you pulled strings from the universe pulled the strings from different soul groups and assembled yourself a new spiritual body and assembled yourself a new genetics and programmed your future body. It was all your creation. And now you jumped in, landed on the land with that creation of yours. It is your creation. It is your creation because you did it as a soul. And it was also your creation as you do it now. You can choose. Realize you can choose any day you can choose to be a star seed or a human. Any day you can choose to be an alien or whoever you want. It is your choice. The reality is so fluid these days, then you can wake up with a decision I'm a star seed and be it. Or another day you can give up and go back into the human, and you would see how the reality would match your decision. You'll get more proof that you are real human and there is nothing alien about you and there is no aliens around. You can easily prove to yourself whatever you want to believe. It is a choice. It's not something to discover. It is a choice. And on the other hand, once you choose, you will discover whatever you chose. It is <laughs> another trickery another part of the illusion the world is whatever you want it to be whatever you dream it to be yeah thank you thank you dave has a question yes 
Hello, greetings. Greetings. Uh, you mentioned uh, Homo Galacticus earlier, and yes. I had a question on uh, these new children that are coming in. I know this very spiritual person, and their child apparently has no chakras. Are these the species you're speaking of? Just a sec. <laughs> uh, there is so many answers to, what, to that simple question. No, typically all humans, aliens, Homo Galacticus, the sixth race, typically the plants, the animals all have chakras. Typically, but again, you see what you believe in, and uh, you show the child to one person, and they would not not find chakras, and another person would look at the child and would see the chakras just fine. It is, hmm, it is in the eye of the beholder. As the child develops and plugs in more into the humanity they will likely develop the chakras. But they might develop the chakras in a different way than others. It's up to them. You see, the chakras are... It is an invention. It is the invention that predates humans, but it is the invention. It's part of the illusion. It is very artificial system. And why does the human have seven days in a week and seven chakras? It is very artificial. It is something which is rarely happens in nature. It is something which was created by the creators of the humanity and given to it as a gift. <clears throat> Number seven is artificial. Those who created wanted to put in the humanity Um, sort of elements. Sort of elements. They wanted to put the servant element, the root, the root chakra, the untouchable. They wanted to put the warrior element, the third chakra. They wanted to put a trader element, the second chakra, sacral one. And they wanted to put the heart. So they assembled that to the best of their abilities. But again, it is very artificial, and you can shift them around. You can find them anywhere. There is a chakra on every joint. There is a chakra, chakras all around, and the chakras can shift left and right. It's very arbitrary, and um, you can easily shift them around, and you would still remain relatively healthy. So take it easy. There is nothing wrong and there is nothing unusual with that. Yes, the child might go become, yes, the child might be that this one, the new sixth race representative. And there is many of them. And they, as they plug in into the humanity, they develop their own patterns of relationship to the human values. Many of them start with the mind, and many of them start with the heart, and develop from the top to bottom. Mm. That's what I wanted to answer. Thank you very much. Do you need to drink some water? Does, you, does Max you. need to maybe <clears throat> take some water? Yes, thank you. Okay, just give, give yourself a moment to uh, clear your throat. <clears> throat> Does anyone else have any questions in the chat? Yes, actually, I had a question. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Hello? hello yes, hello. go ahead. Hello. hello. Um, uh, I would like to have, well, uh, ask a question uh, regarding uh, information that I had received. Um, 
the information is related to that we have a different templates in the different bodies that we have in the emotional, in the mental, in the etheric, in the physical. And so uh, it seems that this will help us to connect to all dimensions. So um, in some way, are these templates going to be united? Uh, are these bodies going to be united? Um, and so how, how do we know that which templates do we have and how can we complete the ones that we're missing? Yes. Hmm. <clears throat> hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> Yes, they are going to be united, but not dissolved. United, but not dissolved. They will be still the frequencies. So the template, understand it as a frequency or the color. That's why the chakras have colors. <clears throat> each of them connects to the level of the reality. And each of them connects to the soul, to different aspects of the soul. So you assembled yourself together and connected to the physical body and created actually grew the physical body on the on the blueprint of the different templates so they guided your creation guided the creation of the body so the body is built on the interface with the soul so there these templates basically are the energetic wires, energetic vortexes, energetic flows that come from different levels of the soul. As you grow, there is more and more activations and more and more energization of different levels. And the art of the life is to play them together in accord, in harmony. To dance using all levels of creation at once. To connect to all levels at once. And at some moments, you can feel that it's happening. In other moments, you can feel you become disjointed and you land in one or another area of your body. You land in one or, in, or another function of your body. So the goal of completion, the goal of perfection is to harmonize. And the heart is the center of harmonization. So harmonize with the heart every aspect of your self and as you grow into the new species as you initiate the new species more is coming more activations is coming and they obviously deal with their spiritual powers spiritual aspects Psychic work, channeling, telepathy, healing, telekinesis. And clairvoyance. So you are on the right path. Just keep moving. And keep being at many places at once. Keep being at the physical and at the spiritual at the same time. That's the path to unity. That's the path to uniting their levels, the chakras, the spirit body, the astral bodies, all together united. Uh, how can we get the one missing? The one templates that are missing? Uh, I mean, uh, I've been told that I hold, for example, the ones from the physical body. 
but uh, how can we get the others from the emotional or from the mental or from whatever it comes, you know? Yes. The answer is the answer of today by embracing your mischievous side, by playing it. You cannot think it through. You cannot, you cannot do it through hard work. You cannot do it through a gift of others. You can only achieve it through playfulness, through easy, easy incorporation, easy allowance, easy embracement, by embracing the reality, all aspects of it at once, and playing with all of them together, juggling all of them, and allowing some balls to drop, and laughing as they drop and break. So laugh, laugh. Laughter is the answer. Joyfulness is the answer. Playfulness is the answer. Take it easy. It is a playground. Only by playing all of that together and laughing with others. Notice there is so many souls and bodies and spirits and physical beings playing and laughing. Be equal to them. Be equal to the creator. The creator is laughing and joyful. Let's answer. So... To get the missing part, you have to understand their humor of the creation. Thank you. There's a question from within the uh, group chat, and there was a, someone who asked the question, if it's possible, or how can they, but I believe it's a general question, How is it possible to achieve physical immortality? And how would be the question. You see, uh, <laughs> the time is an illusion. So you are an illusion of being in a physical body. So can you have an illusion of being in a physical body forever? It's ultimately boring. Agreed, but uh, a lot of people have that question. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can um, have an illusion of being in a physical body for a longer time. It's not immortality, it's just longevity. Yes, you can have an illusion of being in a physical body for a longer time. And as you notice, if you grow older, you get less traction with the reality. You are still in the physical body, but not as often. And you just notice as the years, years pass by faster and faster and faster. And you barely notice what, barely remember and barely notice what happened. So for the beings who stay here longer, they're not as much involved, often, not always, often not as much involved in their activities. And for those who are here involved in the old age, what happens, they, oh, how would you say it? Um, they pay attention, they pay attention to the now, they pay attention to the current events, but they drop the baggage, they drop the, baggage of the past so they are remaining in the, in the now so now look at the choice you have a choice to play this game in the old body or you can have a choice to play this game in a younger body many souls make a choice to play this game in the younger body but of course some masochistic souls prefer to play this game in older bodies. So yes, you can have a choice of longevity and being active in old age. And while having arthritis, dementia, uh, lots of income in uh, lots of physical restrictions, you can still uh, mm. play the game of the life. And sometimes it is enlightening. And sometimes it, it gives you more compassion to others. Maybe you ask if you can be healthy for a long time i guess yes absolutely but then you have to incarnate elsewhere earth is not a healthy place for their bodies and um, 
the main reason is it is very very um, fragmented it is very fragmented it is a breaking apart system yes it is a decaying system it is so beautiful because it is a beauty of the decay in many ways so yeah there are a few uh, bodies here which uh, stay here for hundreds of years but they are not as much involved in the humanity it's almost impossible to be involved with the humanity and remain in the body and not to decay there is something some energies in their um humanity which are poisonous to the body so if you want uh, longevity in a healthy body then you would have to be secluded and separated basically you wouldn't have the experience of human life and you wouldn't be on the mission of ascension you'll be doing something else i guess that answered your question yeah that was a great answer thank you very much uh, there's another question um from x china c and she says or he says i believe um will humanity realize that we live in a 3d illusion on earth and now that the archon can no longer trap humans to or, or, and she's saying, um, is it true that the Archon can no longer trap human souls? Max is here. I'm unaware of this story. Can you explain? There is a belief system that is held by some people that there, there are Archons that stop the human soul from fully uh, leaving this... Uh, third dimensional plane and that we're stuck in a sort of a uh, loop of incarnation yes got it now i know okay. yeah it's not the whole soul it's a uh, part of the program which is uh trapped it's a small part of the soul not big loss and it is because of respect for the free will even for the parts of the program so the the program is, of course, not digital. It is digital plus wave function. Basically, it is energy. It's largely energy. But even uh, clouds of energy have free will in this playground. So if a cloud of energy is deciding, is tricked into deciding to stay, it is allowed to stay. It's not a big loss for a soul. The soul is free. The soul is huge and it is free. It is just part of the dream. It's like a, a little nightmare that is spinning around and kind of gets stuck in time and because the soul is eternal it's it's not in a hurry so from the perspective of the soul it's all right if a little part of itself uh wants to, to be asleep and be confused and uh, be trapped for a few hundred years or thousand years no big deal um because the whole system is shaken now and because there is so many Mm, helpers helping angels helping um spiritual um, beings and supportive personnel like earth elements and others they usually clean up that that mess pretty fast and they kind of work individually to convince the different aspects of the soul to choose to return back but it's their choice which is respected so yeah because um you are now way more awakened uh, you shouldn't be worried about it. It comes from a uh, from utter confusion. When some humans are completely confused, that's what they choose, or some aspects of them choose. So, it's not a big deal. It's it's less and less of a problem because many are awakening and many are working. There is many volunteers working and kind of going from door to door of these um, trapped souls and convincing them to come out. Um, and I invite you to help them as well as a human now on Earth. You can do this work on um, enlightening the trapped pieces of soul to reunite back, to come home. Mm -hmm. Can you give an example of how to help? Oh, you just come to their door and um, in meditation. You can do it through meditation. You can do it through your awakened state. But you have to be somehow connected to them so you have to understand where they are and some people are really talented in seeing what they are and where they are and some people actually 
haunted by that because it's too much for them. So they have to close their uh, spiritual eyes and spiritual ears and uh, and not to mm, be um, too much bothered by them. But basically, if you are aware of them, you take make a conversation and explain them the things from your perspective and, this, and explain that it's okay. It is, they already, mo many of them don't believe they are dead. Many of them are confused and thinking that they are alive and they're, they are afraid of dying. And the main message is that dying is absolutely safe. Dying is absolutely safe. And uh, they are welcome home and their the rest of their soul and the rest of their soul family would welcome them. And it is uh, okay to trust them and just to go home. That's about the message they, they need to get. And if they choose to refuse, that's their, their right. You just give them the message with their love, with your love and compassion. Many of them are so isolated, they don't see any love and compassion around. So if you can connect to them, just your healing, just send them Reiki energy. Your healing will wake them up and allow them to forgive themselves and go home. It's like a child who is hiding outside of the house and thinking that everybody is hating them and hating everybody. You just come to them, be nice to them, and they go home just fine. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Dave, one second. Um, the, the other part of the question that was not answered was, do, um, will humanity wake up to uh, the fact that they're in a 3D simulation? Eventually, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, just fine. All right, thanks. Eventually, yes, but not, not soon. It is, um, it is also a choice, and it is also a question of belief. So the Hindus, the Buddhists, just know that it is part of their culture. For them, it is obvious. It cannot be any, any other way around. And in Christianity and Judaism and Islam, it's not the way it is. The physicality is embraced. And it served its purpose. It gave the game more excitement. You become more destitute, desperate, if you believe you are trapped, if you believe you are here, and that's the only place to be alive. So that was a good lesson for the last, last few thousand years. But yes, now the path is for awakening, and this new metaphysical understanding of the illusionary nature of the reality is coming. It's, it's coming in many flavors. You can call it new age. You can call it theosophy. You can call it light workers metaphysics. You can call it universal knowledge. It is coming. And we are all together the prophets of this knowledge. We are all together the carriers of this knowledge, and we come here to teach it. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, Dave has a question. Yes, hello. Hello. I noticed that there's a lot of people in the spiritual community that are, they spend a lot of their time and energy trying to get out of the matrix, in quotes. Um, can you give any advice for these people that are trying to do this? Because it, it serves a purpose, right? Yes. Be mischievous. <laughs> <laughs> Be playful, 
realize the value of play, realize the value of play in the matrix, become the Neo playing with the matrix and um, transforming it. It's not that the task is to break it. It's not that the task is to break away from it. The task is to transform it to a better matrix. And the better matrix is already designed. It's already out there. It is more like a cheerleading. Hey guys, this playground is worn out and it is boring. And there is a new playground down below here or up below there, up, up there. And I've been there. Let's shift all together. It's a collective choice to go in from the old playground to the new playground. Realize even the spirit world is a matrix. Realize even the spirit world is a matrix. It's not only the matrix on Earth. It's all not only the matrix of human society. Even the spirit world plays by the rules. Even there, there are rules, regulations, borders, um, veils, and there are spirits who break these veils and agitate others to shift to the higher dimension. <laughs> Even from seven to eight, from eight to nine, and so on. It is a collective choice, and it's a choice. Hmm. The best analogy of the modern world are the computer gamers played playing a group game on a server and then hmm, somebody builds a better server and they all decide to go to play on a better server a new version of the game came out and they go and play collectively on a new server that's <laughs> exactly that. what that's happens great. to the humanity hey guys there is terra there and just go there and play some of that will go Carrying their old bodies, and some of them just drop that, you know, that game, die here, and then go incarnate there. Both choices are valid, hmm. but it is a collective choice. It's not interesting until the humanity altogether decides, chooses, volunteers to go play on a new playground. Michelle has an interesting point. She wants to know, is it a computer program really, or is it a different kind of matrix simulator system? As we said, it's not fully digital. There are digits there. Kabbalah is all about symbology and digits, right? But there are also energy waves, 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 fields, patterns of waves, vortices, all kind of fluid waves, fire waves, air waves, um, electron waves, all sorts of waves. So this program is oh, way more sophisticated, way more, um, mm, there is way more code and more complexity. So mm, well, let me find an analogy. Hmm. Imagine yourself going down below into the cells and you can see the cells with their walls and nuclei it's all kind of amorphous liquid fat mm, not fat mm, fluidy uh, gooey stuff gooey stuff so this is the level of the cell gooey stuff and then you go down you see beautiful dna spirals and you can see light going back and forth through them and you go down and see the atoms and the atoms are not basically the balls. They're more like stars and planets spinning around them. But the planets are sort of hard to catch. They are uh, more like fields. They're more like fields. They're more like light going around the sun. So clouds of beautiful shiny orbs, orbs around the center sun. And they go down and see how it's all designed. And it is digits and waves, digits and waves, uh, particles and waves, particles and waves. And you go down and there is no limit down below. It is um, every one of those is conscious. Every one of those also, has its I own have a free will. Yes. How long Excuse me? Who is this? Charlie. 
Okay, we Go ahead. just can you wait one second, Charlie, because he was in the middle of uh, answering someone else's question. And if you want, we'll call on you in just a moment. <laughs> Thank you. So the waves and symbols, geometry, symbols, and waves together is a program. And it is a conscious program. It is smart, and there is a lot of smart, intelligent, conscious, sentient energies who make it all work. Many beings, entities, volunteer and make it all work. They are creating this matrix. So be grateful to them. Be grateful for building this matrix. And when you want to explode it, it is because there is a divine will, divine choice, divine invitation. That's a good word. Divine invitation to transform it. It's not completely breaking it apart. It is transforming it in, in a better one. So for that, we need your help to volunteer and carry the invitation of the divine collective to transform the matrix in a, into a better one. And you are perfectly designed, you are perfectly suitable, and we invited you because you can do it. Your free will, your desire, your choice to join our forces is welcome, is appropriate, is suitable, and it's up to you to choose to join and transform the old matrix into the new one. Disconnecting from it, yes. Disconnect from the traps. Disconnect from their limitations. But not all from all of them, just from the ones which you choose. Select one after another and drop those limitations. You don't have to follow the politics. You don't have to play by the rules of the society, but we still invite you to stay in the body and do your spiritual work on being grounded in the, in the matrix and pulling it up, being grounded in the matrix and pulling it up to the next level, because it is the whole matrix needs to be pulled up, pulled up, upgraded altogether. I think I answered this question and the previous question. Yes, you did. Thank you. Do you need some water? Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, Charlie has a question whenever you're ready. Charlie? I'm here. Mm -hmm. How long will it take me to get into each density? And can you explain the fourth density and fifth density and sixth density to me? Yes. Okay, the time is not set up. The time is an illusion. It is more like amount of experience. So you play in the third density for about between, um, say, 50 and 1,000 lifetimes. You play in usually in the fourth density between um, maybe a fewer, but about hundreds of lifetimes. And then uh, when you go to the fifth density, the lifetimes become more um, diffused because you can go from one body to another with ease. So it's not, lifetimes are not as well defined. But it is amount of experience. And usually, mm, usually, you can judge how much is left by by uh, a few factors. First, how easy it is for you to navigate the density. So it is like playing a computer game. You get to the new level, and until you become comfortable in the new level and know ins and outs, you're not allowed to go to the next level. So same thing with the third density. If you are new to it, you possibly want to stay a few more lifetimes and learn how to be a father, a mother, a, a child, a soldier, a traitor, and all all roles which are here, like a president, a king, uh, 
a banker, uh, executor, uh, judge, uh, slave, um, a prostitute, and so on. So you go through these roles and kind of a thief and try a programmer and all, all the scientists and rather other professions and a trickster and um, um, all sorts of trickster uh, behaviors. So while, while you learn that, it sort of become boring for you because you already have done it many times. And as you feel being bored by it all becomes familiar, that's a good time to shift to the next level. And that's where the doors are open for you and you can incarnate to the next level. So this is generally how it goes. Um, on the other hand, many beings go other way around. They start from the fifth, then they go to the fourth, then they go to the third. And the reason they do that is mysterious, but um, there is something energizing in the third. There is something very energizing. You um, get the strength of your soul, and the strength of your willpower, faster in experiential time, not the absolute time, but experiential time, how much you get experience. So you have to go through less training on the third uh, level and you get more energy there, here. On the fourth level, it's also very interesting. It is more on a higher level. It's more of the level of collective and uh, playing together. It's more tribal, more... Um, uh, creative on the higher level, you kind of go from uh, from being focused on yourself, you go be focused on a level of the civilization. So the favorite topic of the fourth density being is civilizations. They are obsessed about civilizations. They get excited about civilizations. They build new species, new civilizations. That's what they play about. It's not about your life and how you marry someone and how you get your wealth and health and and spiritually grow personally it's more about how you build a civilization how you develop the civilization so it's more like um, a civilization game so you go from the game of uh, survival to the game of uh, spiritual growth to the game of family and town and then when you want to play a civilization game you go to the next level mm. okay uh, I should possibly define a little bit the fifth level better. It is, uh, it's more like closer to creator level. It's above one civilization. It's how you play with them all together and also how you adjust the parameters of the, uh, of the life. It's, it's, it's more like they play now architects of the universe. They're not yet the architects of the universe, but they help the creator with architecting, how uh, constructing the universe together, the galaxy together. And each of them would play, now let's adjust the time flow in this galaxy. Let's make it reverse. What will happen? And let the people uh, jump in time back and forth. What will happen? Like grasshoppers, like, and now your next year. And now happy birthday again. And happy birthday again. So that kind of play. Or well, let's maybe make the water um, solid and the air liquid and things of that sort. And let's see how the civilization would play with this parameter. And then um, let souls do that, that, and that. It's playing with the veils and the parameters and the universal constant. It's the fifth level. And then as you go upper, it's, uh, it's hard and hard to describe, but it is more like... Uh, closer and closer to being a creator in a bigger way. But to play these games, you need uh, different uh, types of excitement and different types of experience. So going from the third level to the seventh level is, uh, you, would, you wouldn't get anything there. It's like, well, boring for you because you're not used to this kind of energy yet. So you would possibly want to... Um, redesign your yourself to go there and there are different parts of that so if you're excited about higher levels there possibly there are yes there are shortcuts so there are shortcuts you go uh, into acceleration courses and uh, they prepare you for playing on the level number seven and so on
Is it okay I could practice my psychic abilities? Yes. No. Because I've been practicing <laughs> since areokinesis, telekinesis, clairvoyance, atmokinesis. Nobody can uh, judge you. Uh, there is no judgment. Yes, no, uh, whatever answer doesn't matter. But I would uh, encourage that. How about this? I would encourage that. Yes, as you play with the psychic abilities, come back once in a while to your physical body and to your physical life and make sure you're healthy on every level, on the level of the physicality, on the level of relationships, on the level of the flow of finances, the health energy, the money energy, the relationship with, with the nature, all of that play, not necessarily at once, but pay attention one after another and check how well you can combine together. Can you at the same time stay in the line of, in a Walmart and at the same time uh, talk to the spirits? That's one of the hardest. Or can you sit in an airport being bombarded by the propaganda from television and at the same time pay attention where you are and do your spirit work? These are the hardest. So try to get good in uh, combining different incompatible things because that is, that is what is missing. That is, it's easy to go into a secluded spot and meditate there, but try to meditate while playing the third, uh, third level games. That is my invitation and advice. You yeah, see, you advice. can, oh. yeah, you see, you can help others by entering into their minds and giving them telepathically guidance. And you also can reach the level when you can, um, through your meditation, make the game more interesting. The reality is what you imagine. So you can imagine a better scenario in politics. You can dream up a better politics and make it happen. So you can even, you have the power of dreaming up a better political situation. You can have the power of dreaming up a better tribal, societal, government, and so on situation. So dream up a better government. That is um, a home assignment for you for the next few years. Try to dream up and make the government and the society more conducive for their Ascension, the open contact, and galactic activities. Thank you for that. Um, Tarek has a question. Tarek, can you unmute or no? Thank Hello? you. Thank you. Tarek, can you unmute yourself? Yes, hello. Okay, great. You, have, you, you go ahead and ask your question. Yes, uh, I would like to ask uh, about uh, uh, bio, bio photonic. Is it, uh, uh, can be help our uh, spirit and uh, physical body? Yes. Let me download the message, just a second. Can uh, can I know how uh, we can I improve my uh, biophotonics? Mm -hmm. Just a second. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. There are many definitions of biophotonics. The simplest one is the devices and. Um, tools, methods of measuring the light that goes through the body. Generally, the technology on the humanity is not well developed in that way. And I realize that many of the light, so-called light uh, waves are not in the spectrum of uh, visible light. So 
it is a wider understanding of light than just visible. It could be infrared and uh, millimeter and uh, microwaves and radio waves, and it goes way beyond the electromagnetics. So um, I would suggest expand your biophotonics to all sorts of waves, including etheric waves and so on. Yes. And um, energy healing would be something to take on in parallel with biophotonics. So you can, uh, you're much more, it's much easier for you to work with the uh, bioenergy through your natural means rather than through modern devices. Most of the modern devices are crude, uh, imperfect, inefficient, and they touch only a tiny portion of the bioenergy. Bioenergy is way bigger, way healthier than modern electromagnetic devices. But developing the devices is a wonderful exercise because it connects you in your imagination and your intuition to all levels of energy, and you start to understand how it works, how it flows. So, yes, developing, designing, engineering is yes. And doing your healing work through traditional energy healing and modern energy healing techniques through your natural hands, body, and um, uh, energetics and energetics uh, of your of your of your being that would be more efficient, more beneficial for yourself and for um, helping others. Ex discover discover your desire to be a healer of others. And I invite you to take on their, the head of the healer, the role of the healer. Become a healer. Discover that you are a healer. And discover that your interest in biophotonics is not only in an interest, in the interest in self-healing, not only the interest in the devices and development of the devices, but also the opportunity to get a new mission in life, be a healer of people, be, be a healer of bodies, be a healer of situations, be a healer of the society, be a healer of their matrix, be a healer of the universe. Uh, that's, that's all I uh, have. Thank you very much for that. Um, there's a question from within the chat, and it has to do with people that have depression. Um, let me just get back to the question because I want to read it in its completion. So just one second. Um, one moment. There's a lot of other chat going on. I have to go back a little bit. It was from Mimi. She said, uh, let me see, where is she? Mimi, where is your question? She wanted to know if it's possible to uh, help people with uh, depression through what method and is there a way to do that in a quick manner? Yes. Mm -hmm. As you were reading, I was already getting it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Exactly, yep. The answer is yes. <laughs> so depression, first to realize it is, uh, it's okay to be depressed for a short while. And if you get stuck in the depression for longer, then um, you might want to get out of it. And that's where your support is great, right? So being supported by others is one of the easiest ways out of the depression because sometimes, how to explain? Sometimes, uh, say, a blind person, it's hard for a blind person to navigate certain places. But anyone who has eyes can take their hand and get them out of the labyrinth get them out and where they need to go. So here is the illustration. It's very easy for others to get someone from the depression. Not all people, but some have that talent and that capacity. They just can touch a person, say a couple of words, connect, send them a little formula of energy, little program, and this program will be just enough to get them out of the depression. 
So yes, it can be done with ease. And how you do this? It's like breathing. You don't have to understand the mechanism. You just do it by practicing. Like um, when you learn to walk, it's not that uh, you studied the mechanics of walking and you didn't take a course on uh, on the design of the bones and anatomy. You just start walking by practicing. So, so in most of their third dimensional and uh, higher dimensional activities, you just do it by by doing it. And um, you don't have to to do anything special except sending love and connecting on one or another level. So talking to people is great. Uh, giving them a promise of, of, of help against depression is, uh, is great. Hmm. Um, connect to that person now. And if you are watching the recording, connect to that person as you watch the recording. Just connect to them, imagine them, you know, everyone practice that now. Or uh, to find a, a friend who needs help, depression or otherwise, connect to them, imagine them. <laughs> Breathe in the, the air, charge it with the healing energy and then blow it in their direction, like... <laughs> and that's it, so be it. So that's about the one of the ways to send the healing. Very simplistic, very basic. It's more your intention and... Uh, Desire to start and complete. Thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question from it in the chat um, from Xchina. She's asking about uh, some beings uh, called Pro Cyan. Pro, I'm going to spell it for you. It's P R O C Y O N I A N. It's Pro Cyanin, Pro Cyanin, Pro -cyan Onian, there you go, prosenonian beings, and she says that they are the ones uh, she believes and she wants confirmation on this that are um, helping humanity remove um, negative reptilians. She says, but she thinks they're working unseen. Do, can do you have any information about these prosenonian uh, beings, or do you know who they are? She's yeah. Um, I don't have a direct insight into that but uh, when you said that it has uh, lots of positive energy so i confirm that okay so you're confirming that they are working to remove negative uh, some of the negative <laughs> beings from our, our i confirm that i got positive energy yes okay perfect Okay. Um, are there anyone else that has any questions? Because I'm out of questions in this chat. Or do you want to stay around with us? Or did you want to bring in another person? Or do you want to stay? Do you have another message for us on the whole? Um, let's start from the question, and then we'll see who be who is best answering it. Okay. Well, I don't have any questions at the moment. So people start uh, typing some questions. Do you need some water in the meantime? Well, it's fine. While I'm waiting for some questions to come through. Anyone? Amanda, you haven't asked any questions today. Do you have a question? Uh, no, Ma Amanda usually has questions. Michelle, do you have a question? You you just came in. Hello. Uh, actually, I had a question. Um, this is Paola. Uh, okay, Paola, go ahead. Regarding, my question is regarding uh, the last answer that you had done with the... Um, with the people with depression. The depression has to be at ease. So what I have is that when they're depressed, it's because there's some inside. So is, is that right? Or uh, there's some other cases? So
Yeah, the question didn't come through physically, but um, I think I'm getting it um, um, on the non-physical level. Hold on a second. Hmm. So there are, <clears throat> there are many causes there are many possible causes for depression. But usually, the way out is through a choice. So to get out, you need to choose to get out. And one of the best ways to get out is to change yourself. Often you drown, not because the outer circumstances, but because you're too heavy. So to get out of depression, you, can, you have to become lighter. You drown because there is too much stuff on you, too much stuff you hold on to. So to float, you need to release it. Drop whatever is not you. Decide to change. Choose to change. Choose to live. Say whatever. I give you a mantra, and it is the mantra, whatever. Repeat, whatever, whatever, whatever. And choose to move on. Wake up to your mischievousness. Wake up to the joker, trickster. Realize you are depressed because you are too hard on yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. Be hard on others. Be hard on the system. If something doesn't serve you, drop it. Be critical of others. Don't be critical of yourself. Allow yourself some breath. Allow yourself to get up. Allow yourself to go out and play, no matter what. Choose it. Choose to be happy, no matter what. Your body falls apart, that's fine. I'll be happy anyway. I'm dying, that's fine. I'll be happy anyway. And when you choose happiness, you get light into your system you get energy flowing because you invited it you chose it you chose to drop the night and that's what brings the light that brings the morning that's simple so if you're in pain separate from it and move on yeah i leave the pain behind it's not me anymore i'm the i'm where there is little pain a lot of joy and sometimes you have to do this choice every minute, sometimes every day. But as you do it, whatever you imagine becomes the reality. So imagine best perfect scenario for you and play with your imagination, play with that connection to the created reality. As you play with it, it manifests. And as it comes, there are other tricksters around. You're not the only one in this universe. Everyone is a trickster. You are surrounded by a trickster. So whatever comes is not what you imagined. But as you play with it, you realize it's even better. It is even better. So choose to float, choose to drop things, and get up to the light. Up and up and up. Thank you for that. I think someone was pointing out in the chat that sometimes pizza had uh, made made you feel better. Even sometimes it could just be eating pizza can make you feel just a little bit uh, better. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can you give a perspective uh, from your um, because we're talking a little bit about depression? There's a, something called the uh, dark night of the soul, 
which is a little different than depression, but it is a moment of complete despair. And it's generally the moment where someone either gives up or they rally and they overcome some great obstacle. Can you give a, a perspective of the dark night of the soul? Because even well, Paramahansa had one in his yes. living lifetime. Jesus had one at one moment. Can you maybe give us perspective on that? Um, I realize that when you're depressed, it's not you. It is something else. There is still someone inside you who is absorbing all that. There is, you are not only you. You are much bigger than that. You are behind that. There is a player, a player who plays you. So when someone is really depressed and really dying, there is still you just being fine and uh, being uh, in alignment with that, being uh, feeling all that, but still uh, there is something beyond that death. So when uh, the dark night comes, re uh, recognize it, recognize it. There is still someone within you who is still capable of thinking, capable of living and capable of perceiving all of that. It is a normal. It's like mm, insect uh, dropping their uh, outer skeleton. And then uh, it's painful, but they come out like very vulnerable, but they come out um, perfect for the new growth because the old skeleton was small. So now you come out of this depression and you can grow bigger. Obviously not in the body. Not, not that the body grows bigger, it is it is your uh, fragment of the soul, which is you, that grows bigger. It is your uh, personality here on the planet, which grows bigger. You come closer to your spirit, you reconnect to your spirit through new uh, tentacles, through new vortexes. So it is um, your spiritual bodies outgrow one of the shells of the one of the spiritual shells. Let's call it astral. Your astral body outgrows your astral shell and uh, and and drops it off and creates a new one. So so that's what it is. Um, some crises are small, some big, and you make out of them whatever you like. It's all a game. Even that is an illusion. And um, it's even in those, you, you get choices. And when you are ultimately in pain and ultimately in depression, it gives you so much freedom because you're desperate. You're not connected to anything anymore. And you can choose any direction whatsoever. You see, that freedom is, uh, is a beautiful gift of depression. When you are desperate, when you're in pain, Anything, any choice, any relief becomes equal, equally desirable. So there is that moment when you collapse to a point and out of the point you can expand in any direction. So that freedom of going in any direction is a unique gift. And of course, it's your choice where to go. Thank you. That was a beautiful answer. Um, Alex had a question earlier, and I, it's to go back to the creation of the worlds. He wanted to know um, who are the creator beings that beyond the humans that are helping create this world that we're in. He wanted to, I guess he wanted actual names of beings, if you could give some specific uh, beings. Uh-huh. Uh, Grindel is, is knocking. Let, let me bring, bring Grindel in. Are you bringing Grindel? Great. Okay. Just a second. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Thank you. Paramahansa, thank you so much for your time, and, <laughs> and we appreciate all of uh, that you uh, shared with us. So much love to you. Yeah, yeah this Max. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it different? Is it different being in Max and in uh, going coming through Max and uh, he would that? get out. We are both squeezing in one body. <laughs> okay. We'll let you get some room, wait, make some room there for yourself. 
What was the question? The question was about the uh, creator beings that are actually helping create this reality that we're in that are not humans. So from what, what other uh, beings are involved in the creation of this reality? We were, oh, were talking about yeah. specifically this earth being sort of a oh. matrix. Yeah, you see the stories are different. You are all coming from, it's, it's a Mandela effect. Everyone comes from a different history. Everyone comes from a different planet here. It's a mess here, mess. Mm -hmm. So it was created here and there by different creators. <clears throat> and now you all come together and you all fight Say my creator was a true one. So there is many answers. And uh, the legends are all true. And some of the legends are from different universes even. So your creation language, le <clears throat> creation legends are no, not even from ours. Yeah. I would say mm, pay attention that reptilians are your ancestors. Yeah. Of is that course. from your perspective? Uh, no, no, that <laughs> is, that is the, the true one. Is that the reptilian plug? <laughs> look, look, uh, look at your um, museums. They are full of reptilians. We were here, and not all of us were predators. There were peaceful ones. There were poets, artists, architects. It was much prettier. It was all beautiful, muddy. No technology of that kind. We were here, spiritual, advanced, beautiful, loving, playful, fighting. Ah, it was beautiful. So what else? Um, yeah, the birds, um, the blue avians. Yeah, they were co-creating, yes. You see, this earth was populated you might not realize, by Atlanteans who wanted humans. They looked humans, but they were a different species. They were number four. And Lemurians were number three, was a different species. Ah. So they are also contributing. They have also contributed, and then get got the they got bored by this planet, so they went away. They messed it up. The, the Atlanteans messed it up and and left. The planet was shaking, and there was darkness and floods and wind and hurricanes. It was a mess. They just messed it up. But the humans were like little tribes here and there, mixing up, mixed up, messed up. It was just one big mess. So after that, some aliens started dropping on the planet, building their colonies. But they couldn't live here comfortably, so they had to ah they had to create themselves a new shape of the body new genetics so they took humans and themselves and and created a new vessel and incarnated there and obviously these were uh, yael pleiadians orions uh, anunnaki and many others and some of them realized that they are building something, and some of them didn't. 
So they just played with whatever clay they got. Syrians, yeah. Arcturians, yeah. And yeah, many others. And obviously the gods and aliens were here playing all together. So the creator level beings were in, um, they realized the potential, yeah. Realize the potential, and that's why they paid attention and oversee that in many ways and oversaw that in many ways and and put the seeds in. They put a lot of love in love. Mm -hmm. And Gaia co-created, yeah. So here you go. And now there are many versions of this mess and then it all come together and it is so diverse there is so many fragments is that what you call us do you call us a mess <laughs> um, that's what it is you can call it whatever you want <laughs> that's what you called it that's why that's why I'm laughing. i mean it is it is uh funny how you enjoy fragmentation Unity is broken in many pieces, and you enjoy uh, every piece is a, a beautiful uh, fragment. It's broken away. It's shiny. It's uh, it's messed up, and you enjoy this, your piece and say my piece is best. And something else, somebody else says my piece is best, and Muslims say no, our fragment is best, and. Hindus say, no, our fragrance is best. Mm -hmm. But really, really, it's all one. It's all fragments. And there is a completion coming. And you can see it coming. You are being told it's coming. You have been warned, haven't you? You have been yes. warned. It's all mm -hmm. comes, all little pieces jam together, jam together in one. Because it's all one broken. It got to come back mm. together into one. All pieces together. That's what we call ascension. All pieces together. I like the idea of what you said about the reptilians coming in and basically messing everything up and then abandoning it when they found a better No, 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 I didn't. <laughs> Not reptilians. Reptil who, who did that? Excuse me. Who, who, who came in and created it, made it a mess, and then left it? Atlanteans. Atlanteans. Oh, the Atlanteans. Yeah, the, yeah, the fourth race. Is that, is that their reputation? Do they do that Sorry. all over the universe? Is that like their MO? Do they do that all over the universe? Go somewhere, create something, make a mess, and then throw it away like a toy and go find no, another playground? No, no, not frequently. It was, uh, it was a lesson. Mm. Yeah. They learn their lessons. They don't do it often. But they just got too excited. It was too exciting <laughs> for them. They uh, they <laughs> made uh, big uh, mm, sexual parts and played with them. It was yeah. their assignment. They got the divine assignment to develop the second chakra. And then they uh, went a little too far with that. Huh. They developed lots of hybrids and had sex with them. So... And they got carried away, <laughs> and then they started fighting because they went with the, they went. The assignment was to develop a second chakra, but then they started developing the third chakra, which is a fighter one. And as a soldiers, they were, yeah, sloppy soldiers. They weren't good ones. So instead mm -hmm. of fighting, they started making tools for fighting, and eventually they just exploded the whole thing. But no, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's it's more sophisticated. Okay. As far as I know. There, there's a question about they free... needed to wipe out some of the nonsense that they created. That's what oh. was the cause of the the of the catastrophe. They oh, just so went they... too far. It had to go away. It was just I too see. much of the seeds of nonsense that they created through hybridization. So. They had to wipe it out. There were ways out more peaceful, but they didn't choose it. They chose to fight. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Okay, the, um, the question, uh, there was a question about free will in the YouTube chat that uh, Michelle wants to know. Um, there's been an ongoing uh, discussion about, still about the matrix and how much of it is programmed and all these things, but you touched on it before, but if you can expand or, or actually Paramahansa touched on it, what percentage of our free will is actually free with so many hands in our pot? Can you repeat the, the... Yeah, she wants to know how much, because there's so many players creating our reality, and there's so many different beings that have a hand in what we're doing. She wants to know how much of our free will is actually free when there's all these other uh, levels of interference, basically. Ah. All and nothing, right. You are... When you want to express your free will, nobody listens, right? Mm -hmm. And you're complaining about that. Mm. I want that, and nobody listens, nobody pays attention. So you express your free will, and nothing happens. So then you get stuck. You get stuck, and you get stuck, not simply stuck. You get depressed and really stuck and being in pain and suffering. And that's when the universe listens to your free will. That's when you get stuck, when you collapse to a little tiny embryo, little tiny leftover of your essence that's where your free will being listened to and there's a time when you really have to choose yeah choosing when everything is good is easier but choosing when you are down that's the choice when when the universe listens uh -huh. and that happens often you often have mm. to choose and often the choices you are given mm, they suck yeah. So that's where your choice is important because it's not the choice which is a, which is being listened to. It's the experience. You you get in the experience of choosing being in a trouble. That's the choice. Yeah. When you're in trouble, that's the real choice. And the experience what matters. And what you choose really, yeah, nobody pays attention. I need to explain, I guess you don't get it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the learning process. It's like in, in a class. Yeah. Now everyone uh we, we we practice. Now think about the number. And now think about the color. You see, it's very easy for you to make a choice, right? Right. But but nobody actually listens to your choice. Like in your uh, in your school, the teacher says lots of nonsense, right? And you disagree <laughs> all the time. And you're not allowed to say anything, like right? They they just shut you up. Yeah, yeah. Sit down, be quiet, and let me say my nonsense. And right now you do the same. I say a lot of nonsense and she is quiet there. So be mischievous. Come out and scream out your choices. Scream out your decisions and make others listen. And uh, imagine what you really want and Collect your willpower, willpower. Collect all your bravery and drop all your fear and do something. Do what you want. And don't be surprised. You will be persecuted. You will be pushed back. You will be restricted. But that's a lesson. That's a challenge. So it's not only 
making a little free choice here and there. It's making a choice and stand by it. You need to get guts to really stand by it and say to your teacher, say to anyone what you really think. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, there's a question also from the chat from um, Haknuman Soksan. Wow, what a name. He's saying that he's dealing with a lot of negativity uh, in his area in uh, Southeast Asia. And, he, and this can be a general question for people, but um, how can he deal with handling negativity? He needs some tools. He says the vibrations are going up and down and he's being judgmental about it. He needs to get a different perspective. All right. There are many ideas around there. I will give you my take. If you have to deal with a bully, you have to deal with the bully. So you got to be strong. Sometimes you have to fight back. And sometimes you have to not fight back, but still be strong. If you have to deal with negativity around, you have to be strong. You have to choose to be strong. And that takes guts. It also takes understanding you have to understand where you are right and where you are you if you see negativity outside out there all there like it's like yeah negativity 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 right it means that there is negativity inside you and if you want to repress it out there, it means you are repressing the negativity inside you. Because if you were all light, like all light, all light, you will be above all that, and you wouldn't even notice the negativity. The only way you notice it outside is because you are dark inside. So my take, don't repress your negativity. Play with it. Combine the light and the dark. Combine your yin and yang. Combine your masculine and feminine. Combine your healer and trickster. You see, to be a good healer, you have to be a good trickster. You have to trick the reality into the health. You have to make an illusion and manifest it in the reality. So embrace your darkness and use it to improve yourself and the world. You see, what is outside is what you imagine. So imagine it out, the outside be better and meditate. Yeah. Yeah, meditate, like meditate and change it. It's possible. Yeah, especially collectively, connect to others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to others, talk, connect, do it together. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. It's a beautiful answer. Um, we are up at the top of our hour, so um, would you like to uh, give us a blessing or some closing words before you go, Brendel? I invite you to do a guided meditation. That would be wonderful. Thank you. 
whoever wants to embrace a reptilian within them, join me now. Ah, oh, shake your tail. Uh, we're, we're shaking with you. Thank you. Ah, uh, pump both of your hearts. <laughs> Breathe all lungs you got. Embrace the strength of you. Embrace your strengths. Feel the strength of the Creator. Feel the power of the universe. Mm. Absorb the sunlight with your scales. Mm. Close the lids of your eyes. Clutch your teeth. Mm. Play with your belly. Mm. Feel as the energy of the universe, the strength comes to you and fills your muscles and the bones with the strength. Embrace the unity of the reptilian kind. Embrace the unity of the water, the dirt, and the air. Embrace the rules of the game. The honor is the strength. Honor is the unity. Honor is your choice. Discover. Discover. Look inside. Discover your darkness. Embrace it. You are strong because you have color. You are strong not only because of light, not only because of darkness, but because of all colors of your scales. You are strong because all colors of your blood. Your strength is in unity. Embrace the unity. Connect to the unity of the universe. We will prevail. Our unity is our honor. Our honor will prevail. Because the ancient prophetess, prophecies, because the ancient prophecies said so. Because we want it with all our hearts. Because the blood of our ancestors beats in our hearts. Because we are ancient. Because the future is ours. Unite together. Be strong. Your honor may light your path. Have a good day. Thank you very much, Grendel. Much love. It's always wonderful to speak with you. And um, I, I, I know I speak for everyone. It's always a pleasure to have you. So thank you for your sharing.
Max, is that you? How's your throat? Do you need some more water? Maybe. Well, that was excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank, Thank you for you. being there. Thank you for being there yourself. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. I wasn't here much. I, no, I was here part of the time. Yeah. Uh huh. Great. Um, just for the people that are watching, just so you know, this has been Human Colony. Uh, we are on hucolo.org. You can find us there. Next week, we will have Jim Charles, and that will be a paid webinar. So if you'd like to become a member of Human Colony, you can join for $10 a month, and you have all the access in our paid webinars as well as our free webinars, which are every week. You get first uh, chance at a seat in the room. Um, and coming up in August, uh, Max, we have the Human Colony Workshop. It'll be what, yep. August 16th through the 21st? Yep. Is that correct? 22nd, 16th, yes. Goes to the 22nd, and for mm -hmm. $400, you have, you'll be in uh, channeling classes, Galactic Reiki. Uh, every day there'll be a wonderful activity up there in uh, New York, up in the woods, the mountains. So Upstate New York, very Upstate. far from New York, New York City. Yep. Near Niagara Falls. Near Niagara Falls, so um, you can also find out about that on cucolo.org. So mm -hmm. once again, Max, thank you so very much, and uh, we'll see you next week with uh, Jim. Thank you. Thank you very much thank for you. everybody for having me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for being here. Oh, I'm going to have to turn it off. <laughs>